The data we're going to look at are all published science, testing results, or public standards. At the bottom end of the radiation scale of what's called power density, or signal strength, is the minimum level at which cell phones will work. Pine needles were found to age prematurely at 0 0.000027. At short-term exposures of 0 0.05, children aged 8 to 17 experienced headache, irritation, concentration difficulties, and behavioral problems. Point one is the bow biology or building biology guideline for extreme concern. 1.0 produced sperm DNA fragmentation and a decrease in sperm viability in vitro. Also at 1.0, the science shows the following bodily effects can occur. Headaches, dizziness, fatigue, insomnia, chest pain, difficulty breathing, and indigestion. 2.5 saw altered calcium metabolism in heart muscle cells. 4.0, changes in the hippocampus affecting brain memory and learning. And at 6.0, DNA damage in cells. So, where are smart meters on this list? Electrical Power Institute in December 2010 measured a single ITRON smart meter with pulses up to 7.93 microwatts per centimeter squared. These tests are at a close distance, approximately one foot away from the meter, but an infant's crib could be just as close on the other side of the wall where the meter or bank of meters are installed. Even though there are all these known health effects at levels far lower, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Luxembourg see fit to set the standard at 9.5. And China, Poland, and Russia, 10.0. This is the same level at which behavior has been altered, producing reflexes of avoidance following 30-minute exposures. A room of 12 smart meters, very common and even a conservative number in an apartment building, tested at 19.8 microwatts per centimeter squared. So, how can utilities and governments get away with forcing these devices on everyone? This is how. In Canada and the US and several other civilized countries, the safety limit is set at 600 to 1000 microwatts per centimeter squared. This so-called safety limit is literally tens of thousands of times higher than levels which are known to damage health according to peer-reviewed published science. How is this even possible? When you see this comparison of America's approved radiation levels next to some northern European countries, it makes news like this make more sense. France has banned the use of smart devices in schools. Children between the ages of 3 and 15 will have to leave their smartphones and tablets home. France's education minister says the law protects students. So this is a picture of St. Augustine School, I believe in 2015, when they ceremoniously removed the Wi-Fi router. Even a few small private schools in America have erred on the side of caution. So Roots and Wings Montessori is a Wi-Fi free zone and any technology at the school is hardwired. The use of wireless internet and even cell phones has been banned due to health concerns surrounding that technology. And given the risks involving children, the principal just doesn't want to take that risk. Whether this is true or not, the default I think needs to be on the side of safety. We can still provide the children with technology using wires. Why not? Why take the risk? You may have noticed that China and Russia, among others, have set their maximum RF limits 100 to 1,000 times lower than what our FCC deemed safe for us, which, by the way, in 2018 was one of the highest in the world. So what's up with the FCC? In the United States today, the gentleman who is directing the Federal Communications Commission, Tom Wheeler, was for 10 years the executive director of the Cell Phone Telecommunications Industry Association. And now he's in charge of regulating those devices. Tom Wheeler has been hell-bent on getting pesky red tape out of the way of companies he spent many years lobbying for. Getting the RF nightmare known as 5G installed within a light post of you has been his biggest priority. For what it's worth, here's what a telecom fox in an FCC hen house sounds like. Now to make this work, the 5G build-out is going to be very infrastructure intensive and will generate tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important because it means that U.S. companies will be the first out of the gate. And that is why 5G is a national priority. And stay out of the way 
of technological development. We won't wait for the standards. If anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. Wow, I just had the strangest deja vu. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Yeah, Tom, we know you don't want anyone questioning the authority you were given to ensure that Verizon and AT&T make as much money as possible, even if Americans' health is the price to pay for it. See, Tom was in charge of the agency that determines the general radiation levels that are deemed safe for you and me. The ones we learned were among the highest in the planet. Most people use their cell phones freely because they assume, like I did, that studies have been done to make sure that they're safe. The guidelines from RF coming from cell phones is called the SAR, or the Specific Absorption Rate. Since the FCC is supposed to protect people, not industries, let's take a look at how they're doing. I mean, what do I know? I'm not a scientist, but I thought, surely the FCC would be testing the impact of RF radiation from these cell phones on our brains. I don't know, like do an MRI scan of a brain before and after a phone call. No, they're not doing that. Well, then they must be testing RF on animals to see what kind of exposure fields have on their biology. No, geez, okay. Uh, well, then let's hope they're testing to get kind of an idea to know what happens to our biology when we're surrounded by cell phone, Wi-Fi, cell tower, other neighbors' Wi-Fi, etc. Oh, definitely not. In fact, the SAR guidelines were determined without actually testing RF on humans or animals or tissue at all. Or well, how they test it. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Meet Sam. Sam, or specific anthropomorphic mannequin, has no eyes, no brain, or nervous system. But instead, he has a plastic head full of salt and sugar water, which was thoughtfully determined to emulate the average conductivity of human tissue. Yeah. The reason why Sam is considered good enough for government guidelines is because the FCC's entire system of RF testing is based on one hugely erroneous assumption, and that is they assumed that RF can only cause harm if it's heating human tissue. So Mr. Saltwater Sam is measured for heat increase in his head and nothing more, which is convenient considering there's nothing more he could do. In 96, thanks Bill Clinton, the FCC approves this thermal only guidelines test believing, hey, it's great because microwaves can't cause harm without heat, right? Even though in the 60s, Alan Fry, funded by the Navy at the time, proved that the blood-brain barrier leaked in rats when they were exposed to non-thermal levels of RF. Blood-brain barrier? Pretty important, no? It only means substances like heavy metals, bacteria, viruses, etc. can enter your brain. Our guidelines forge ahead, insisting non-thermal radiation is safe, even though it is widely accepted that from 53 to 79, Russia was zapping our U.S. Embassy in Moscow with non-thermal microwaves. They called it the Moscow signal. In 1953, the Russians began to bombard the U.S. Embassy in Moscow with electromagnetic radiation in the microwave spectrum. Before the attacks, the USSR had met with the U.S. to try to head off an arms race in electromagnetic weapons, but were refused. In retaliation, they began microwaving the U.S. Embassy. And a huge amount of those people came down with symptoms, including Ambassador Walter Stossel developed a rare blood cancer lymphoma. Several other employees experienced headaches, depression, confusion, even death. U.S. Ambassador Stossel contracted a blood disease bleeding eyes, nausea, and eventually lymphoma. He and other employees eventually died as a result of the microwave attacks, but the fact was kept secret from the embassy employees. What's worse, high ups in the military knew they were being zapped by Russia, starting in about 63 from a random bug check. They found the frequencies. So instead of telling these employees that they were being zapped by microwaves nine hours a day, they just started drawing their blood and studying them. <laughs> 
These diplomats were apparently lied to and told that their doctors were looking for exposure to a new type of virus and kept them in the dark of what was really happening while studying their demise. Dr. Henry Kissinger sent a secret memo giving hazard pay to embassy personnel in the 1970s. After the story leaked in the 70s, the government put up copper shielding and Samaritan Henry Kissinger arranged some hazard pay for those guys for their subjectation to an experiment that they didn't sign up for. I bring this up because one, this is proof positive that our government knows that low-level microwaves over time caused major biological problems. Two, Russia zapped these folks for over 20 years and we know it took several years for issues like blood cancer to begin servicing. How many years have we had Wi-Fi now? And finally, I have to ask, why would we think that the government could do that to our own American diplomats in 1960s and 70s and not us now? I will leave that up to you to decide. President Dwight Eisenhower was the first Supreme Allied Commander of NATO before he became the U.S. President. Listen to the warning he blazingly gave the American people in his farewell speech around the same time against the then emerging group that I believe are now ultimately behind the reckless radiating of our citizenry. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Good evening, my fellow Americans. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. Certain members of our government do know this is harmful, while most others do not. Politicians like Edward Kennedy, John McCain, both died of brain cancer very recently, glioblastoma, already been proven to have a great increase for long-term cell use. Do they know that cell phone radiation increased the risk of these cancers? My friends, I think it's important for us to recognize that there's a lot at stake here. It isn't just Iraq. Certainly Iraq is part of it, but it's not just Iraq. It is certainly other parts of the region as well. Jury's out. That seems perhaps they don't. In contrast, the traitor to the American people, Tom Wheeler, knows exactly what he is doing. He knows how dangerous these levels are, and he refuses to let the American public know the truth. So yeah, plastic head full of salt water being tested with thermal increase, slap of the face of science, Tom Wheeler knows it. Thankfully, he had a chance to know that some American people know that he is a traitor to us as well when these guys crashed a telecom party and let him know their thoughts on his actions. Cancer, cancer, cancer. When did the FCC go to warn innocent children about getting brain tumors? This is a sophisticated, quiet holocaust we're exhibiting. How long are you going to experiment with people's lives without real safety stairs in place? It's time. It's time to tell the American public. That guy's authoritative. Why are these causes cancer? You're killing hundreds and you don't care. You don't give a damn. Yes, he does. Tom, you delivered a million dollar bribe to the Obama administration, which led to your appointment. You represented the industry for 12 years, and that's all you're going to represent from here on out. You will not represent the public. You will only represent the corporations. Tom, how many people have to die from brain cancer before the federal government puts warning labels on cell phones? How many young ladies have to die from breast cancer because there's no warnings and they don't know and they're keeping it in their bra? How many? How many does it take? A million? People dying? Is that just collateral damage? Collateral damage? How many people have to die? Promise! <laughs> John is great to be. These angry accusations regarding standing up for corporate or big telecom and not the people make even more sense when you realize that the 1996 Telecom Act not only approves these high levels of radiation, but also in section 704, it says of this act that no health or environmental concern can interfere with the placement of telecom equipment like cell towers. So no one can tell telecom companies to remove any kind of wireless due to health issues. It is against the law. So as long as they stay compliant with the FCC guidelines, which we already know do not protect health of people, it's fine. And you can't tell them to move it.
what that means for us. If Verizon wants to put a tower in your neighborhood, they apply for a, a permit in your city to put the cell tower in. But if your city denies them, and if Verizon believes that they denied them because health was taken into account, then by law, Verizon now has the right to sue your city. Yeah, so according to the act, uh, your town can only refuse to permit installation of wireless equipment for how ugly it looks or because it decreases home values. Makes more sense when you see pictures like this now, doesn't it? And you thought AT&T wanted to give you a better view out of the goodness of their hearts. You know, this aspect is especially horrifying when you hear heartbreaking stories regarding the very real impacts of an FCC approved device like this one. I had a son that was going to school at San Diego State University and he called me and he said, Mom, I've got the worst headache. He says, I'm projectile vomiting all over my apartment. And I said, get to the hospital. And the uh, emergency room doctor called me and he said, your son has bleeding in the brain. And I said, we'll be there immediately. When he got out, Dr. Tanawai told us that my son had brain cancer, had to pack everything that he owned in California and brought him home and he only survived just shy of seven months. August 7th of 2009, I uh, typed in cancer clusters and I saw San Diego State University brain cancer cluster. I think I just, it put me in shock and I ended up on the floor for the rest of the day, but um, 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 sorry. I realized they were talking about my son. So I uh, got in my car and I drove out to San Diego and I went over onto the campus. In these articles, they talked about a cell tower and I went over there and there's this huge cell tower that's outside of this building, which towers above Nassateer Hall and room 131 where all these kids and people have come down with brain cancer. My son, Rich Farver, died October 11th of 2008. Professor Charles Cutter died June 19th, 2008. Nassateer Hall, room 131. Lou Terrell, diagnosed with primary lymphoma brain cancer in 2008. Dwight Anderson died in 2008, Nassateer Hall. Miss Laurel Amtower died August 29th. Richard Funston died and he was also located in Nassateer Hall, room 131. I just think that this wireless stuff, we just need to get a handle on it and warn the public. I just want parents to know and I want kids to know that these are very dangerous. By the way, you can search how close you are to any cell tower by going to antennasearch.com. You know, the crime here is that... I gotta move. I'm gonna lose some light here, people. So while Tom Wheeler was Mr. Obama's FCC appointment, Unfortunately, under Trump's FCC choice, 5G, which will bring far worse levels of RF than we already have, is moving along at the same steady clip that Tom Wheeler put into motion. Last month, while the rest of the world was in a tizzy about Kavanaugh, <laughs> These are live images, folks, at the doors of the Supreme Court where protesters have gathered. The real agenda to be watching of 5G being deployed as quickly as possible gained even more momentum when Trump invited Big Telecom to Washington for a mostly hush-hush 5G summit. Trump's plan for 5G now is not only bring it on, but bring it on as quickly as possible. And he says he supports giving these careless companies, tax cuts, and deregulation to make it happen even faster. America, big telecom is the swampiest of swamp monsters, and it cares not if your president is on the right or the left. Most are unaware that telecom industry is perhaps more well-funded than the pharmaceutical industry, and just if not more powerful politically. Their lobbyists are very effective in disseminating and protecting the industry's version 
of the truth. A simple search on opensecrets.org will show you which politicians have accepted tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars from Big Telecom and then just slap their name into Google and take a look at their stance. Pretty simple really. So what message is worth billions of dollars to suppress? Here are a couple. I'm Dr. Martin Blank from the Department of Physiology and Cellular Biophysics at Columbia University. I'm here with disturbing news about our favorite gadgets. We are performing an experiment on children. We are exposing children to microwave radiation for six hours during every school day. We have had absolutely no studies looking at the long-term effects of this radiation on young people or even on adults. Cell phones, tablets, Wi-Fi, etc. Putting it bluntly, they are damaging the living cells in our bodies and killing many of us prematurely. It may take a year or two, but you can, you can cause neurological damage and cancers with low-level microwaves. And you can make all your opponents sick. It, it's a perfect weapon for a government. The human body, as speaking now as a biologist and as a physician, was not designed to deal with the ex explosion of EMF activity in the environment. And there are studies looking at rats. These rats have an increased risk of developing various types of cancers. Their immune system is impaired. There's evidence of DNA breaks. We are seeing increases in, in brain tumors. Uh, we're seeing increases in Alzheimer's. We're seeing increases in uh, all of the neurotransmitter diseases, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, Parkinson's. These are all disease systems that are known to be associated with low-level energy exposures. We're talking about 24-7, around-the-clock exposure, whatever you are and your whole body. You never get away from it. And it seems from our studies that maybe your immune system can cope with it for a time, but it will deteriorate and then the irradiation will uh, definitely damage cells at a deeper level. And the question is what will then happen? As you say, we don't see people falling dead on the street, but for instance here in Sweden, more than one third of people report heavy problems with their nighttime sleep. And sleep is one of these areas uh, which definitely various forms of electromagnetic fields will have an impact on. Cancer is not the main concern that I have. I'm really concerned about sperm count and about effects on pregnancy. I just got back from a conference in Turkey and Greece where we heard new studies showing that prenatal exposure to animals results in offspring that have smaller brains and more hyperactivity. I think this interferes not only with your health but with your abilities to learn. So real quickly, back to my personal journey. Two months ago, I'm feeling really crummy, closer to three, completely unable to focus not or think, not normal. It became very clear that putting my laptop in my lap was literally, it was like a brain drain. So I was sincerely considering getting off of YouTube because I couldn't do it. Something was wrong. And thankfully, I was led to find out what was going on. So I am now properly shielded and back to work. But anyway, I knew the laptop was affecting me badly. So I figured out that the Wi-Fi antenna on my laptop was putting out this massive dose that was worse than a cell phone. So in my little pea brain, I thought, oh, I'll just build a lap desk and I'll protect myself from it. So I did. I went to the trouble of buying shielded paint and material and silver in it to make this lap desk. But anyway, then I found images like this. Awesome. So that painted a very clear picture for me that I was not only getting, you know, radiation from my laptop on my lap, but also three dimensionally, as well as from my cell phone, my neighbor's Wi-Fi, and so on and so on. And then I found out because I looked <laughs> in this old cool cabin that I'm renting, it has a newly installed RF emitting smart meter. Yay. So even though I'm here in this little mountain of a few thousand people, I'm like steeping in my mostly self-created RF soup. And uh, yeah, it just made sense. And then I just started working on getting rid of it. See, the thing about RF that it helps to understand is that because it's invisible and tasteless, it doesn't smell, you know, like cigarettes or DDT, those things you can see, but something about this like invisible nature of this, it really makes it easy to dismiss, okay? I'm, I'm pleading with you not to do that because these impacts are very real. So when I found videos on YouTube where people have these RF meters and you can measure the strength of the signal and hear what the radiation sound like, 
Wow, that changed everything for me. And we can hear it. When the Wi-Fi base station transmitter is turned on, it is constantly sending out a beacon signal, 10 times per second. And this is the radiation we need to be worried about. And when we unplug the base station, the radiation stops. You are exposed to an even greater level of radiation generated by your Wi-Fi enabled device, such as an iPad, smartphone, or laptop computer when downloading and uploading information. The closer you are to these devices, the higher your exposure. Here I am measuring the constant radiation emitted by the cell phone antennas on top of this apartment building. And as you can see in here from our microwave meter, the intensity is quite high. These high levels of microwave radiation that are used to connect our cell phones can also be found in our homes. The one that really made me mad, okay? Because I expected my cell phone, but this one I did not. The one that really made me mad was when I learned that my hands-free phone, my cordless phone, yeah, the one I paid extra for for like 15 years, they're worse than a cell phone. And they've been compared by these independent scientists to be like having a cell tower in your house. Here we have the base stations for two cordless phones. This one is a 2.4 gigahertz digital phone and this one is a newer model of 6.0 decked phone. Both of these phones emit microwave radiation as soon as you plug them into an electrical outlet. Let's hear what they sound like. The current cordless phone base station that are sold in North America are constantly emitting microwave radiation as long as they are connected to electricity. And this is comparable to bringing cell phone towers into your home. At the very least, don't ever put them next to your bed. Put them across the house, or better yet, go old school like the presidents do. But as a side note, you guys, it has been a complete kick to watch my daughter try to learn to use an old analog phone. You would think it would be just, yeah, try it. It's fun. Say what?